It was the summer of my nineteenth birthday. My semester in New York City was ending, and I had a heavy decision to make. I could either stay in the city for the summer and sleep on the streets until the dorms reopened, or I could go live with my then-girlfriend and her mother in a tiny one-stoplight town in Pennsylvania. I had whittled down my possessions to what I could carry through the streets and on the subway, but it was still too much. On top of that, I was young, far from street savvy, and had no friends in the city. Everyone back in Pennsylvania was urging me to make this safe choice, so even though the last thing I wanted to do was return to the place I had fled less than a year ago, I relented. That house was far from safe. On the outside, it looked storybook quaint. A cute red ranch house nestled in the pine forest with a beautiful blooming dogwood on one side and a crimson Japanese maple on the other. My girlfriend's mother, Marge, was equally as charming at first, graciously opening her home to me even though I knew she too was struggling. Marge was unemployed and had barely left the house since her husband, my friend's father, died two years earlier on the living room couch after a long illness. Her eldest son had died in a car accident five years ago. The crash site was almost directly outside of the front door. Marge lived off of government checks. She did her best to make me feel welcome at first. On the very first day, she gave me a speech about how I was now part of the family, and I could consider her my mom. She then went in for a big, overly sentimental hug, which I returned although I was feeling uncomfortable. I barely knew her at this point and physical touch also isn't my thing. But I ignored my unease, after all she had saved me from homelessness. Almost immediately, I noticed something was off about the house. There was a feeling of heaviness, like suffocation, as soon as you walked through the front door. At night I would often wake to noises coming from the basement. Not small creaks and snaps, like a house settling into its foundation, but loud bangs and thumps. Marge openly accused us of sneaking out at night through the basement and making these sounds, but we never did. Every day when I came home from work, I would enter through the basement, which was underground. The basement was divided into two parts. The front end was a garage, and the back end was another little living space with a couch and table, and a washer and dryer in the corner. A thin wall with a huge window and glass door separated the two. Every day I would return from work and pass that empty black window and door to ascend the staircase into the kitchen. As I neared the top of the stairs, the walls would close in on me. The air became heavy and the hairs on my neck would bristle. It was like someone was standing behind my shoulder, watching me. I would always fumble with the knob to the kitchen because I was in such a rush to get out of that basement. I didn't think much of any of this until midsummer. One evening, my girlfriend and I returned from a trip to the city to find Marge sitting on the couch alone, in the dark. She was at her wit's end. There had been recent contention between us over a car I had just bought. She had wanted to put it in her name, so that I would be on her insurance. I had originally agreed to this plan, but after dealing with several months of lies and manipulative behavior from her, I had decided to sign the car under my name and pay for the insurance myself. After all, it was my car. My good friend's cousin had hooked me up with it, and Marge had no involvement with my decision to purchase it. Marge tearfully accused me of not trusting her, not treating her as family. I replied that of course I didn't trust her. It takes a very long time to earn my trust, and she hadn't been behaving in a very trustworthy way. This opened a whole new can of worms. She pledged that she would someday earn my trust, even if it took years, and forced me to hug her again as she cried hysterically. She then started ranting about how there was a demon inside the house, how it was controlling her, growing inside of her, as she repeatedly grabbed at her stomach with clawed hands. This twisted speech lasted for hours, and all we could do was stand there and wait for it to end. I was watching a woman go insane right before my eyes. Somehow the conversation finally ended with Marge promising to me that she would never rape me like my parents had. She went into her room and got under the covers. My girlfriend went into our bedroom, 
which was directly across from Marge's, so that both beds were visible with the doors open, and sat on the bed, while I, stunned, washed up in the bathroom. Just as I was drying off, I heard an odd sound coming from Marge's room. A few seconds later it grew in volume until it was unmistakable. Marge was orgasming with the door open, while, I later found out, staring directly at her daughter the whole time. I gripped the doorknob and waited for her moans to end. It felt like my stomach was being ripped out of me. That was the last night we slept upstairs. For the rest of the summer, we slept on a futon down in the cold, mouse-infested basement. Marge got worse by the day, her behavior becoming increasingly erratic and aggressive especially towards my girlfriend. During several more rants, she expressed the desire to hurt us if we ever tried to leave her. I kept a knife within reach at all times. We tried to bring the cats down in the basement to live with us, thinking it would lighten the mood and help with the mice, but they wouldn't stop howling or come out from behind the dryer, so we had to let them back upstairs. I began to have nightmares about a man in the basement. I would dream that he was peering through the glass window at us and trying the locked door. I would wake up in a cold sweat most mornings. One day, my car was in the shop so my boss gave me a lift home. When I pointed out the little red house as the one, she said, That house? And actually pulled over to the side of the road. She told me that a man had hung himself in the basement of the house many years ago and that the house was cursed. I tried to laugh it off. I entered through the basement door as usual and couldn't help but look around and wonder where it could have happened. The ceiling of the basement was only 6.5 foot tall and had no visible beams. Then I walked up the stairs. When I got to the top, that same old feeling of dread descended on me. On a whim, I switched on the light and looked up. There was a hatch above me I had never noticed before. The hatch led to an unfurnished crawl space, and directly above the steps to the kitchen was a roof beam that could have certainly sustained the weight of a man. It was a question of living with the demon above, or the demon below. In the end, we ran away, threw everything we could in our little car and hightailed it out of there before she could pull some crazy shit to stop us.